you know, my girlfriend when I was 18, uh, when I first, you know, hit the streets and everything. And well, I mean, as an adult, you know, when I really had nowhere to go, honestly. Um, and like the story I told about where my mom was staying and the house behind it, that was a crack house before they like connected it. Uh, I mean, not a crack house, more like a meth house. White people, like white supremacists. Like a redhead girl I knew took me there. Somehow I ended up there with people that I knew and it was kind of a, it, like, if yeah, you know, when I, when I was there. But um, across the alley, that's where like the Sydney apartments were. That, I don't know about now, but back in 2000, that was the, like the most concentrated crack dealing block or building in the whole city. And then second place was probably a couple blocks up the street at the Argonaut. Um, I mean, in, in all reality, it, it's possible that it wasn't, but it sure appeared to be. I mean, we'd, we'd be in the lobby with 40s and just smoking weed. When you walk in the building, <laughs> have a TV out there, just a bunch of people post it up, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the building where I used to have keys to empty apartments because my buddy sold crack dude from new orleans and uh the manager was a crackhead so had it pretty good there you know and i me and my girl would and she see the thing the reason i bring this story up is because i'm really looking at something that i, I probably didn't mention because i don't really think about it but she was a good girl like i mean a lot of times she didn't sound like it because she you know she was trying to come out of her i mean she, she was trying to come out of her shell, you know, like she, you know, talk, mention nasty shit, you know, or like not nasty, not, but like for a good girl, it was kind of like, I could tell she was, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, she was 18, but she still lived with her mom and her brother up on 17th and Jackson the building's gone now they leveled it but there was two brick buildings apartment buildings one on each side of the street the other one's still there the jackson manor which was more ghetto the one she lived in was nicer and less criminal activity bigger apartments um but she had to sneak out just to hang out with me her mom didn't know about me she'd like sneak out in the middle of the night we go walk around we go up to the park and just we'd sleep in the park she'd sleep in the park with me sometimes it'd be cold as hell so we'd have to go get more blankets and you know and then you know like for her to be such a good girl like to be in the, the environments that i was taking her she she was pretty uh pretty uh courageous i mean she'd walk there by herself come meet me sometimes you know whatever that's pretty kind of a far walk but i mean you know I don't think she ever had any problems that I know of. She never said anything, but like to be sleeping in these <laughs> empty apartments in in that kind of environment just to hang out with me, it's pretty, you know, I don't know, just to be with me and whatnot. Like, it's kind of crazy. A little bit, I don't know. For all I know, she, I don't know what she did prior to that when we were in middle school and I don't know about high school, I can't remember. I used to make fun of her a lot because she had glasses. I used to call her Daria from like Beavis and Butthead because she kind of, I mean, kind of resembled that and she was quiet. But, you know, she was good looking, you know. But um, I met her. Well, when I first hooked up with her, it was at the bus station one time and I was in my little player mode you know at that time I was you know I was only like in that mode for a couple years really and I just like eh, I'm like it takes too much energy you know but I used to you know be real s s smooth with it you know I just don't like that energy because it's not me it's not really my my the real me it's like you know it's it makes me feel dirty <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, I picked her up at the, the bus station and that was the beginning of that. She used to make fun of me. <laughs>
Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know what I said, but you know, that was it. And she was a virgin. And, well, you know, they're all virgins, even after they're not virgins. Well, most of them, but I don't know. Maybe she was. I don't know. But I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, but you never know. But, like, as far as, like, mentally and everything, yeah, I mean, she fit the part, you know, I can, I'll give her that, you know what I mean, so, uh, but yeah, I don't know, um, it was kind of wild, and of course I cheated on her a lot and I made the dumb mistake of telling her about it thinking she wasn't gonna leave or whatever I was mad one time and yep she left that was it <laughs> that was it like whoa I mean I don't know I mean, fucking but oh well you know I'm sure it wouldn't have fucking lasted forever anyway like you know, she didn't even know what the hell she wanted in life yet. Nobody does at that age, right? So, but yeah.